Hello, lovely ladies. It's me again, Rayana Starr, uh, your hostess with the mostess and the concierge of this group, empowering women entrepreneurs to succeed in business. And I'm so happy that some of you are taking me up on these invitations to do an interview so that I can introduce you to the group so that we can get to know each other. Because as women, we like to connect and collaborate and commune with each other. And when we can put a face and a, a video to a person and a name on a screen, it makes it more personal. Now, what's cool about this interview is typically when, I, when someone schedules an interview with me, we've already had a connection call and we already know each other a little bit. But Amanda just dove right into the deep end of the pool and said, I want one of those. So we were talking a little before I hit record. And I said, well, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself so I know how to interview you? And then I said, so tell me a little bit about you. And I thought, no, wait a minute. Let's just do it. Let's do it on the video. So Amanda, first question for you is, why did you take me up on the interview? What did you, what uh, so you what, yeah, what did you see for yourself? in the getting the interview so i love connecting with amazing women entrepreneurs and and women that are out there just you know helping other women and getting out there and reaching their full potential of the success and all of that so when i saw your offer i said this is amazing i can connect with you connect with other women who are doing the same thing awesome and, um just share my story well all right, so everyone, that is like the perfect little commercial for while I'm do why I'm doing this. Exactly that is what I'm hoping for. Yay. Okay, so tell me a little bit about your story. And we want to hear the story that got you where you are today, doing what you're doing, because mm -hmm. we want to connect at the heart as women, and we want to be able to relate to each other and resonate. So tell me a yeah. little bit about who Amanda Kinderman is. Sure. So um, I was raised by a single mother, only child, and we lived in poverty for about 10 years. And um, it was something that was a very formative and defining experience in my life to grow up in that way and be able to go on to go to college, be the first person in my um, family to graduate college. And I actually entered into clinical research. I got a biology degree and a master's in public health and said, I want to stay wow. in science. You go, girl. <laughs> you are literally a badass. Wow. <laughs> to go from poverty, which had an impact on you, and I want to ask you about that, to being the first college graduate in your family, and then to go on and get a master's, that is the definition of being a badass. So how did 10 years in poverty impact you? Um, it really kind of, I mean, I grew up not really knowing different. So, you know, I just assumed that everybody went to the grocery store with these coupons that were food stamps back in the day and that you had to you know, pick and choose what you were going to get for food and that everything you were getting was, you know, prepackaged, you know, I ate a lot of hamburger helper and like Kraft mac and cheese and things of that nature. And, um, I was also, also a latchkey kid. So because my mom was single and she was a high school dropout, she was working multiple jobs. And I basically knew to get off the bus, walk to my apartment or my trailer wherever we were living. And I was home alone for three, four hours a day, you know, just making sure that I did my homework and that I was being a good kid before my mom, you know, finally came home to make dinner and, you know, finish wow. her evening. And so it, it was definitely like, a didn't know any better until I grew up and talked to other kids and other people and was like, Oh, that wasn't necessarily normal. I mean, it wasn't uncommon, but not everyone's experience was like that. Wow. I'm going to shut my office door because there's a glare on my glasses <laughs> distracting me. Wow. So you're very resilient, mm -hmm. very resilient. So 
why why biology and public health? What 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 were why what was the interest there? Um, I had always liked science as a kid. I just found it really fascinating, and I shuffled through many different types of of science minded careers that I wanted to do. You know. Um, astronomer, uh, marine biologist, paleontologist. And so I happened so to just land drawn in... to science. Yes. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It tended to be my best subject in school. So when I graduated with my biology degree, I actually fell into clinical research. So like clinical trial management and all of that. And, you know, I, I, have done clinical research for probably the past 12 years, but I actually had an aha moment in 2020, like a lot of other people, and I'm going through a career change right now. So I'm actually leaving science altogether and you know, wait, transitioning. But wait, before you leave science, what is it about being a clinical researcher? What is it about that kind of work that you like? So I really enjoyed being a part of the, you know, solutions that people were finding. I worked in like oncology and um, diabetes clinical research. So to be a part of finding, you know, treatments and things that people with cancer and with type one diabetes had was very important to me. And while I wasn't meeting with the patients directly, I still had a hand in it just being involved in managing those clinical trials and making sure they were running smoothly and that, you know, everything was um, fitting regulatory wise and all of that. So it was really important to me to be a part of something like that because um, I love you know, it's, a, it. it's a big love impact. It. I love your heart. Yeah. Un underneath the brain down below that there is this <laughs> connection between that brain, that beautiful brain Yes. And the heart is leading the way, but the brain mm -hmm. is, is, you know, that's awesome. Love it. So tell us about the transition you're making. So as much as I loved being in a science, you know, career and being involved in clinical trials, I realized I was just too far away from impact. I wanted to help people directly. And um, I'm an Enneagram too, for anyone who knows. What I'm that an is. Enneagram I'm, too. <laughs> I'm a helper giver. So I yeah, constantly want to help others. Like, yep. Yep. And um, yep. yeah. And have you done some study around the Enneagram? I have. Yes. Yeah. I, I, I'm trying to get a little bit deeper into it now. I'm also learning about human design and finding I'm that a really fascinating. In human design. I am also a projector. Oh, are you? We, we've got to talk yes. offline. That's cool. That's very cool. Yeah. We have some things in common. Um, yep. Human design and Enneagram are just really great systems for awareness, uh, for learning about other people and our differences mm -hmm. and how you, basically, if you were a machine, what kind of machine are you? And how do you operate? Right. What's the best fuel to put in you? Human design and Enneagram are great systems for helping you understand yourself and others better. That is Definitely. so cool. You were, <laughs> you were, you took me up on the invitation. I which did, is how yes. projectors designed to do. And as projectors, we need to invite each other. Yay. Yep. Good for you. Okay. So <laughs> go on. I, this is getting even more fun. Love it. So, um, so once I realized that clinical research wasn't the best fit for me and for my personality, to see the results. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to actually help people directly see the results, be impactful to people. Um, I started doing a little research, doing a little reading, and I basically was, you know, working with a friend of mine and had an aha moment and said, I think I need to be a financial advisor. And she happened to be a financial advisor. And she was like, oh my God, you'd be so good at that. Completely well, how random. Do you I know. Biology <laughs> research to, oh, I think I should be a financial advisor. Right. Bring those journeys together for us. Sure. Yeah. So I actually, about seven years ago, got divorced. I was married for six years. We met in college and, and it just, we just kind of 
grew you know, apart. fell away and it, you know, very amicable divorce, but something that I had to learn brand new was about my finances. How do I manage finances on my own? How do I live on my own? All of that. And as I was reading these like financial books and learning about what I needed to do to make sure that I was, you know, setting myself up for success in the future, I got really into it. I really liked the the information it was sharing. And I was starting to notice people around me didn't have any kind of financial help. They didn't have an advisor or anyone they could talk to about their money. Um, financial planning wasn't really considered accessible to people with a lower net worth or anything like that. And I wanted to change that. And I wanted to be a woman in the finance industry because there's so few of us even today. And you know, there's stats out there that say women prefer having a woman financial advisor on average. And I just wanted there to be more of us represented in the industry be, to like, you know, copy what's out there in the world. So how did you make the transition and what was the education and training like? And do you practice what you preach? And do you have any tips? I know I just asked a whole bunch of questions. <laughs> You're a woman, you can handle it. Help us. Oh, yeah. Take us on that transitional journey for, for you. Right. Absolutely. So once I decided that's what I want to do, I started interviewing just a bunch of women financial advisors in the Denver area and just basically asking them how they got involved in finances, uh, what firms they worked for, how they, they liked them, what it was about them that um, led them to those firms. And then I found a broker dealer that I could work with that would allow me to transition part-time and start kind of getting to know the business, start taking my licensing exams and getting licensed before I made the big like full-time leap into financial services. And so that's so what, what I've been doing right now. So what licenses did you have to study and get? Study for? Sure. So my first license was the life and health insurance license. Yeah. Okay. Um, I personally believe life insurance is a, a great part of a financial plan and is super important. And a lot of financial advisors and firms do not handle life insurance at all. So I wanted that to be the first license I obtained and, you know, could um, practice. And then I just took my securities industry essentials exam or SIE. And that's a like, exam you have to take in order to take your securities licensing exam. So you don't actually get a license from it. It's just like a, a prerequisite, if you will. Right. And, and that's so, so you can advise on stocks and things like that, right? Right. Yeah. So I'm actually studying for my series seven right now, which would allow me to be able to, you know, handle people's retirement accounts and, um, you know, invest their money into different types of solutions and things like that. So I'm hoping to take that in the next month and then I'll be considered a fully licensed advisor and can do pretty much everything I need to do to help clients out. So let me ask you, you know, because that's quite a, a change, you know, underneath it all is someone who wants to help people and be on the front mm -hmm. line so you can see, sorry, Zoom does this weird thing with my eyebrows. Isn't that the <laughs> weird thing? It doesn't, I can't figure it out. I've gone through every setting. It's just the weirdest thing. <laughs> they just dance around. Like that's why that. they look so good. <laughs> it's really weird. <laughs> I, and I, it always trips me out. I always make a comment about it. Um, so you're in, you're in science, mm -hmm. you're, you're doing research. You're not close enough to the front line to see the results of your work. You have this epiphany. Mm -hmm. I want to be a financial advisor. Tell me more about the epiphany, how you make that leap, because you're mm -hmm. new and you're just getting licensed. So you don't have a lot of experience. So there's got to be something in your story, you know, the poverty that you experience. So mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about how you leave all that education and experience to go do this and the humility of wanting to have an interview while you're still in the process of, of getting your licenses and stuff. So that's the part of the story I think people would want to hear. 
Sure. So um, I will say in clinical research, I realized I was getting like ridiculously underpaid with a master's degree mm. and 12 years experience to make less than six figures to me was just unacceptable. So I had, I know from a financial standpoint, I had hit a ceiling in my current career. And, and it, it was, was unacceptable. She's a badass. That was unacceptable. <laughs> unacceptable. She took a stand for herself. Awesome. Yeah. What else? So I was reading a book at the time called Secrets of Six Figure Women. And there was a woman in there who was a financial advisor. And what she said really resonated with me. She said, I love my job because I get to help people set up their financial futures and help them with their money, but I can also get paid well at the same time. And that hit me because those were both things I was looking for. I wanted to help other people but I also wanted to get paid well. You so, were her ideal client. <laughs> yes, exactly. You have that. It's like magic when, when you really resonate. Yeah. Yeah. And so when I was looking for like broker dealers to work with, I found one that had a large um, percentage of women and diverse women in the firm, which was hugely important to me. And this particular firm has, has it set up to where they offer all their financial planning services absolutely free. So that was huge to me because that's the accessibility part that I think is so important. We're able to sit down with clients, educate them on their money, show them what their money can do for them, and then you know talk about their goals and dreams and what they wanna accomplish with their money and do all of that free and get rid of the minimums that some firm firms have, get rid of the fees that some firms have, and just have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with them without them feeling like, how much is this going to cost me? Like, how, you know, what do I need to do to get here? Um, so that's what really, like, empowered me to want to do this and just contribute to the financial, financial education and the help that, that we could provide. And what has it done for you personally, this journey, this transition you're making as far as your finances and, and even your relationship with your mom? So it's been incredibly empowering and something I'm actually excited to do and get up and, you know, learn more about. I mean, some of the information in these licensing exams is very dry. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but it's, it's actually very interesting to me and I'm learning these things. And then I want to teach other people about these things. Cause I think it's just so important to know about some of these financial topics and solutions out there. Um, but it really has made me figure out what my money mindset is and what are those like blocks in my head around money, especially coming from poverty, you know, am I still in a scarcity lack mindset around money or because I am learning about the freeing opportunities that money provides, am I, you know, getting rid of those blocks and just yeah. kind of opening myself up to abundance and prosperity and hoping I can do that for others as well. And that's huge. I mean, no one wants to live with the mindset that there's only a finite amount of money that they can only make so much that they can only live this particular life just based off of what they have. Right. Because it's so important to know that the opportunities are infinite, that there's so much out there that you can do and earn and bring in and save. And it's, it's really empowering. Yeah. And no matter where you are or who you are, you can start small, even if all you have is $20 yes. a month to spare. You, it's something. Yep. And if you start mm -hmm. sooner rather than later, you know, Absolutely. you can accumulate more wealth for retirement. And so many people now, like my mom, and when I lived in Baja, I lived in Baja for a few years. There's just so many people that their retirement is social security and social security wasn't developed for that. And it's not enough. And no, so I think it's smart. So how are you practicing what you preach? So I, um, 
I definitely help people with budgeting, with saving um, for emergencies, for retirement, for exploring investment opportunities as women really need to get out there and invest and get into the market just like men have been doing for, you know, ever. And so I've been implementing the things that I'm learning, you know, establishing budgets each month to make sure I'm living within my means and making sure to contribute to my Roth IRA and contribute and make sure my emergency savings is padded and there for me if an emergency arises. And then exploring, you know, amazing investment uh, strategies and opportunities within my retirement accounts and all of that. And just, um, you know, like wanting to get involved in the things that I'm learning about. Awesome. So let me ask you this. If you had a rooftop message that Mm -hmm. everyone would hear and heed, you know, the advice that you could leave women with that, and they would actually do something with it. What would that advice be, Amanda? My advice for women would be to really face your finances head on and um, go on a money date. Those are really important to me. It's one day a month and it could be in the evening, put on some music, pour yourself a glass of wine or whatever your beverage of choice is and look at your money. Look at all of your bank statements, your credit card statements. Yeah, don't your avoid accounts. it. Go there. Don't Go avoid there. it. Get a you, pleasant experience. Every, you feel empowered. Yes. Make make looking at your your finances and your money a positive thing, surrounded by things you enjoy. Because if you set a date every month to look at your money, you will become more empowered around your money and more knowledgeable around your money and. When women do that, they start doing things. They start taking action. They start saying like, oh, I've got an extra $400 a month that I've just not been touching. What should I do with this? As we know, inflation's high right now. Sitting in a bank account, you're losing money. So having that relationship with your money and doing it positively every month is going to be huge for the awareness that it will bring to women. I love it. Love it. I love that you're practicing what you preach. I love your story. I love transition. And what I want to ask you to do is the same link you use to schedule this, schedule a connection call so we can just chit chat about the things we have in common. Just want to get to know you better. And all of you ladies really want to get to know her. I mean, what a great story to be, to have the courage to say, This isn't working for me. I'm not going to play by your rules. I'm going to go and do what my heart wants me to do. And to be able to shift gears and take that hero, that heroine's journey of I'm starting a whole new career because I want to be happy. She's making being happy a priority. I love it. And she wanted to be closer to the front line and actually see how she's helping people. So up and a black cat just entered the room. (laughs) Ooh, ah, hi kitty. So, and you're an animal lover. My dogs would probably love chasing your cat. So Amanda, I'm just (laughs) delighted to be able to connected with you. Please schedule, uh, you know, a connection call with me because I'd love for us to chat a little more about Enneagram and human design and wax philosophical. So you're just a delight. I'm so glad you're in our group. I'm so glad you took me up on the invitation, fellow projector, uh, to be seen and called out for your gifts. This is a woman with wisdom beyond her years. She's courageous, obviously a badass. And if you want to be empowered in your finances and have a conversation, it's free. She gets paid through the investments that you make. So talk to her. She's not going to hard sell you anything. So let's connect ladies, show her some love in the comments down below. And Amanda will provide me all her contact information, which is posted above. So everyone, thank you so much for joining us. If you would like to be in the spotlight and be interviewed and have that shared with the rest of the group so we can all get up close and personal, get to know each other better. 
I would love to have you. So just make a comment even in the comments down below in this post that I'd like to be interviewed, something to that effect, and I'll send you a link on how do you can do that. All right, everybody, uh, take care. Thanks so much for joining us. And uh, I look forward to the next one.